Welcome back to Presume Legal. I'm Misha Janice, an attorney licensed in both New York and Florida. Today, we begin a series of videos in which we re-watch testimony from the three past trials in the murder of Dan Markell. The goal is to cover one area of testimony per video and see how that testimony has changed over time. These trials span from 2019 to 2023. So we'll see the progression of preparedness and execution of testimony over that time. This should be an interesting exercise as we get ready for the fourth trial set to begin in September, 2024. We're starting with Wendy Adelson's testimony about her understanding of the immunity that she's receiving for her testimony. Now, you are testifying today under a state subpoena, correct? Correct. And that state subpoena gives you immunity for your testimony, right? Yes. Can you explain to the jury, since you're an attorney, what immunity is? Immunity is freedom from prosecution. So that means that anything you say today can't be used against you if the state decides to arrest you later on. The state isn't going to decide to arrest me. The state isn't going to decide to arrest me. The state isn't going to decide to arrest me. Arrest me, arrest me, arrest me. Oh, she's basically begging to be arrested. Well, despite Wendy's assertion that the state isn't going to arrest me because she has no clue what she was talking about regarding her immunity, Judge Hankinson explained to the jury the three types of, of immunity in Florida, transactional, use, and derivative, and the types of immunity that Wendy would be receiving. So this is a little legal lesson. In the state of Florida, there are three kinds of immunity. There's transactional immunity, there's use immunity, there's use and derivative use immunity. Uh, transactional immunity means that some person cannot be prosecuted for an offense. Uh, use immunity means that what, what the person says cannot directly be used against them use and derivative use immunity means that what they say cannot be used against them nor can it be used to develop leads to gather evidence against them uh, the type of immunity that miss adelson has received because i have been the one that uh, explained it to her is use and derivative use immunity in other words what she says today cannot be used directly against it, nor can it be used to develop leads against her. She does not have transactional immunity. I mean, she could be prosecuted for the crimes involved, but what she said cannot be used against her, nor used for any leads to develop information. So hopefully that answers the juror's question that asks a question. And are you here today pursuant to a state subpoena? Yes, I am. And do all state subpoenas confer immunity? I don't know if all state subpoenas confer immunity, but this one does. Okay, and do you believe that your subpoena is special or different from other state subpoenas? I, I don't believe it's special or different, so I suppose they all carry immunity. All right, and does the immunity conferred upon you by the subpoena mean that you can never be prosecuted and associated with this case? That's right. That's what you think it means? That's what I think it means. Okay. And do you think, isn't it true that it's use and derivative use immunity? Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay, but not complete immunity from prosecution. Do you agree with that? That's different than what you just asked before. So I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? All right, so what I'm trying to allow the jury to understand is what sort of immunity you have. What is your understanding of what it means for you to have immunity pursuant to the state subpoena? So I have derivative and use immunity. And so in the future, a prosecutor couldn't use what I say here today against me. Correct but you could be prosecuted you just nothing you said here today could be used against you in that prosecution do you agree with that i suppose so okay so here we have wendy still not understanding or acting like she doesn't understand the type of immunity that she's receiving as a result of her subpoena testimony 
Georgia Kaplan, the prosecutor, has to spoon feed her to get her to acknowledge the benefit that she's receiving. On cross-examination, which was very hostile, and as recovery addict would say, spicy, Wendy initially says, oh, everybody gets immunity if you testify, but no, that's not true. Defense counsel drilled down the fact that Wendy's immunity comes only if testifying by state subpoena and only the state can give immunity. And if she was not subpoenaed by the state or by anybody, she would not be testifying. You'll recall this was an issue raised in Katie's appeal. If you haven't watched my video explaining that, make sure you do. I'll leave a link to it in the description box. So Wendy goes on to admit that she wouldn't testify voluntarily, but then she says it's her duty to testify. Basically, I'm here, aren't I? So on the one hand, it's her duty to be there, but she only agrees to fulfill her duty if she gets her immunity via a state, not a defense subpoena. Let's watch. The government asked you about immunity, so let's get into that. You, you, you explain that as an attorney, you understand that when the government gives a subpoena for somebody to testify, that it conveys immunity, right? That's my understanding. My knowledge of criminal law dates back to 2003 when I took a semester in law school. So forgive me. Graduated law school, right? This isn't my area of law. When you, when you clerked on the 11th circuit, it was with Judge Jordan, right? I did immigration appeals. Yeah, but you still dealt with criminal stuff as well, too. Very little. So... Your understanding, though, is it doesn't mean they can't arrest you. They just can't use what you say here against you later on. So you're protected. Correct. And you needed that to testify, right? It's just given to testify. It's not a question of whether I needed it. It comes with testifying. You fear being charged by them. So you need to have that protection of I your I don't words. fear being charged for a crime I didn't commit, no. Your basic understanding of criminal law, though, you know that if the defense gives you a subpoena, you get no immunity. Correction, improper question. I'm not going beyond that question. All right, that's the only question you can ask on that. If I give you a subpoena, you don't get immunity, right? Correct. You came here because you were subpoenaed and had no choice. Correct. Right? This is not fun. You've I would been, not do this by choice. You've been inconvenienced. I've not been inconvenienced. Professor Markell was shot in the head. I'm not complaining about being here. This is my duty. I'm here. So in an attempt not to confuse the jury, this time around, Georgia won't bother asking Wendy for her floozy explanation of her understanding of the immunity she's getting. There's too much testimony to get to. Instead, Georgia simply leads Wendy down the road of correct statements of the law regarding any future use of her testimony and the possibility of future prosecution. And are you here today pursuant to a subpoena? Yes, ma'am. All right, and that subpoena confers use and derivative use immunity to you, so nothing you say can be used against you in the future. That is correct. Okay. That doesn't mean you have full immunity from prosecution, but nothing you say here and nothing derived from it could be used in that prosecution. Is that your understanding? That is my understanding. So Meek and Mile Wendy is finally not confused, not seeking clarification about the question, She's simply on the same page about the status of her immunity and how her testimony could impact her in the future. So from 2019 to 2023, she's finally got it. Now we know that in this trial, she still insists that she won't be arrested, but as far as any implications that has on her understanding of her immunity, it's not consequential. So thanks for joining me today in the first video of this series. I have quite a few more topics that we'll be looking at over the next several weeks. The next video in this series will be covering Wendy's testimony about changing the boys' names. If you have suggestions of topics that were covered in each of the trials that you'd like to see back to back, let me know in the comments. If it's not already on my to-do list, I'll consider covering it. Other than that, thank you for liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Until the next drop, peace.